broad topics, broad minds, broad hosts, but not just for broads. This is Broadscast with Kim Goldman and Jackie McDougal. Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. welcome. Where did we join today? <laughs> we showed up in the Inland Empire. Do you know? Yes, we're in the in, the Inland Empire, San Bernardino. So yes, I know where that is. Doesn't Jessica. that sound like so? I feel like it's like the Inland dun, dun, dun. Empire. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah, we need welcome to, to all of our uh, our new listeners. <laughs> That's very, very exciting. So for those of you that didn't know what happened, um, we joined KCAA uh, and yeah. we are super, super excited to be here. Um, yeah, along you, with all of our other loyal peeps. Our peeps across the nation. Um, I'm Kim Goldman and this is uh, my my dear sweet friend, Jackie McDougall. That is me. She doesn't usually say it like that, but we are... Uh, <laughs> it's funny, a lot of people do though. McDougall? Yes. Oh. Um, we are the hosts of Broadscast, which is a fantastic show, we think, um, about, about and for women, about candid conversations uh, that we like to have about politics and religion and parenting and relationships and sex, and drugs and rock and roll, <laughs> not really, and wine and food and um, parenting. And I think I probably already said that. But anything that kind of comes across our plate, we, we like to discuss it um, in great candor. Um, and we are bro-friendly. That is uh, always, always. Um, but we, uh, we, every, we sort of feel like every woman's voice matters. And so we like to, we like to bring our listeners into conversations that impact us on a daily life and, and, uh, dissect it. Absolutely. And you know, we can also, um, be found on the social on oh, the right, on the Soch. Yeah, we're all over the internet. We're trying to break the internet. <laughs> oh, I, and, and you can't break the internet well, we unless can. you're Al Gore. And, and, and we have a rule. We are a Kardashian-free zone. So mm. that's something that's important the to us. The last time you'll hear that name. Yeah. So um, that's important to us. So uh, not that we don't like pop culture and all things crazy that comes with it, but, um, you know, that's just something that we like to do here. On, on the broadcast. <laughs> yes, on the broadcast. So, um, yeah, so it, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, all at broadcast, um, and uh, the Instagram, and all <laughs> that good stuff. So, hey, um, what are we going to do next? We're going to do... And now, broad topics. A little broad topics. That's what we're going to do. So for those of you that are new to our show, um, Jackie and I like to tackle things that are in the news and like to have quick little conversations. Sometimes they get into long <laughs> debates. Um, they begin as quick little tidbits. This week on uh, our Facebook page, we posted uh, a picture or an article. I don't even know what it was with um, Chelsea Clinton's husband. There was an article that said she missed Chelsea Clinton, missed her daughter's first day of preschool and she right. got like annihilated for that despite the fact that her husband and the nanny pushing the stroller with the baby in it uh <laughs> were on their way to school and he was there and chelsea clinton was off doing some daughterly duties just campaigning for her mother who's running for president yeah. i mean you know it's not like she was off getting a manicure first and the of internet all. went up in arms and and, <laughs> and raked her of the coals for not being there for her mom and so you made a good point like, for not, about, yeah, not, being not being there, there for, her, for her by daughter. the way her daughter is two so right. it's not the first day of school it's like the first day of child care right. you know which i i apologize to mothers and fathers of children who are two because it is a big deal i remember those first days you know of school of ki- of preschool my kids were two as well right um and it was exciting and it was all and it was very monumental and um but right but the mm. but the alternative it's not like she was left alone and just dropped off by an uber driver she was there with her nanny who she i'm assuming spends a lot of time with who is probably part of their family or right. assumed to be part of their family and the dad <laughs> why did he get like cast aside in that I mean, um, despite the fact that he was on his phone for the entire <laughs> I was totally walk say that. to That's school, and totally disinterested in what was going on. It's not However, like he knew that he didn't know that cameras were there. I know. You know, the paparazzi's not exactly subtle. So I, um, I kept thinking, dude, just get off your phone. Come so, on, we're trying to support you. Get off your phone. Exactly. I mean, because yeah. th- that's such a double-sided thing. Number one, dad was there, and that's very important, and that's equally as important. You know, and and kids need to have, you know, those memories. With, right. And and, but. He wasn't doing himself any favors. Okay. Let's play devil's advocate. Maybe the kid was asleep in the stroller. Like, we don't know that either. Because the nanny was just walking along. I mean, the whole whole image, I mean, she looked like mad that she had that job. (laughs) She looked frustrated. But I just, 
I, I think, um, you know, we, we are very quick to disregard the role that the, the men and the fathers play and that it's something horrible that Chelsea Clinton did by doing a job, campaigning right. for her mother, being a good product of good parenting, if, just dep- depending on what side of the coin you like to fall on. I mean, she was doing, she was working. Right. And now we've, we've, we've made that a bad thing because she wasn't there for her two-year-old's first day of preschool yeah. or whatever right. social care i mean but, uh, you know what do we expect care? from the media that makes you know hillary clinton's pneumonia <laughs> uh battle something that's like she's got the plague and they blow off the fact that donald trump is changed his mind about turning over his records he's just the healthiest no i think he turned him over on the dr oz show no, he had he him didn't. in his pocket he didn't i don't think he turned him over that was the whole thing and then i think that he wasn't going Uh-oh, to discuss now it. we're busted that we don't watch the dr oz show <laughs> really <laughs> We're busted that, now. That was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that was the whole. Uh, no, that was the whole thing. His intention was to release his health records um, and his physical rec- the results from his physical on the Doctor Oz show, and then he changed his mind. Oh. And so he, his whole thing is, I'm just, I'm the healthiest president in history. Yeah, trust me, trust, trust me. me. I'm just the healthiest. And he, d- <laughs> he did acknowledge that maybe he's a little overweight, um, but that, and I don't think Wait, they Donald released Trump it. said something. I, I like don't know that he did. Improve. Oh, okay. I don't know that he did. That's just what oh I'm my hearing. God, can you imagine if it were Dr. Oz was like, other than being the chubster. Well, so that didn't happen. And then, um, Melania Trump was under some, uh, scrutiny, scrutiny because she, and listen, I didn't pay all that much attention. I'm going to call myself <laughs> out right now, but for p- possibly working here without being, um, legal right you know and so her ultimate like immigration an, attorney right. was supposed to come out and discuss what happened there and that didn't happen and then a letter came forward and then somebody else was going to interpret the letter and now there's some discrepancy on the date of pictures that were taken and when her first modeling job and the dates oh, have changed geez. and depending on when those pictures took place that would determine whether or not she was here legally so it's all these weird mysterious let me ask you this and i want to ask everybody out there this and please if you're on twitter um tweet us at broadcast um or facebook or wherever and let us know because kim i must know do you, does that, any of this stuff matter to you do you would you vote or not vote for somebody based on when his wife modeled versus had legal like well, I wouldn't. So, so this that's kind of a it's a loaded question because his whole thing is about illegal immigrants, right? Like he has this he mm. has these feelings about illegal immigrants, people not being here legally. But then he married a woman who may have been here illegally and working, and so and now dates are changing on docu like there, right. there's something shifty. And for someone who walks around calling everybody else in the world crooked, yeah. And now there's something that may not make him look like. I wonder, but I also feel like, God, if I was scrutinized for every friggin' thing I've ever done yeah. in my life, yeah, that you'd like, be crooked too. I would be, yeah. I just <laughs> so I I appreciate some crooked of that. Kim and crooked Jackie, right? Like I appreciate that, but I just here, my feeling is I don't think we're ever told a hundred percent of the truth. I think that everything we read and see is through through a different and skewed variation of someone's interpretation of a story that is third hand. Like I mm. just feel like I don't know that we ever get. 100% of the truth ever. And if you want to read about it, you have to then consider the source, you know, and wonder right. what's the agenda of the person that's reading the article. Unless I listen to things live, but then even then, you know, you omit things and yeah. you, you know, you have a team well, of people that are telling you to tweak your words or, and I also, I cha- I've been known to change my stance on yeah. things. You know yeah. what I mean? So, um, but is that a deal breaker for me that his wife would like, I don't really care. Like, yeah. Knock yourself I mean, out. Things, if you were yeah. here making money, take it and knock yourself out. Yeah. Like I don't. Yeah. But I do think that all this hubbub about Hillary Clinton and her coughing fit and <sighs> like that whole thing, like, and now like this conspiracy that she had a body double, like it's, it's embarrassing. <laughs> it's really embarrassing. Well, he's still trying to find Obama's birth certificate. No, so, apparently he now believes that he was born here. Oh, that's his see, thing. He flip flopped again. Now oh. he, now he believes he was born here. My gosh. You'd think with all the flip flopping, he, he'd be in better shape. Oh, <laughs> but I'm bum. Comedy hour here. I'm yeah. Podcast. Yes. Wah, wah, wah. Um, I don't even know what that noise was, but so, uh, <laughs> that's that you made a bad joke. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have days like this week where I was feeling under the weather. And I don't want to leave my house, never mind go and campaign. And I'm not 68, as much as I may feel that sometimes. Right. You know, so imagine having the flu. Like, you know what the flu feels like? Or no, pneumonia. I mean, it's... in. Okay, but moving us from the role of (laughs) broadcast host to uh, potential president of the United States, she's under a different 
a, a different expectation. Right. And one of the things that her her staff has conceded that they, they probably did not handle that properly. And her press secretary or someone high up in her press office was saying that, you know, we were more concerned about, you know, Mrs. Clinton's health and we were alerting the media. Mm. And I'm like, OK, but that's your job is to alert the media. But right. why does the media have to know? And then but then I go, if you were so concerned about her health, why did you take her to her daughter's apartment before you took her to the doctor? Mm. So I yeah. wonder, but yeah. but who cares? Like, yeah. well, where is be- our compassion? I, I mean, think they're trying to hide it because everybody's um, questioning. I mean, they're, it's so funny because Facebook last week, um, I think we talked about this a little bit, but the things that were trending, I realized I used to actually take that stuff into consideration like it was it was real, <laughs> you know, which is shame on me. But I, I notice things that are trending. And then when you click on the source. Yeah. It's bogus. Right. Like one of them was like a 9-11 conspiracy post that was trending. Yeah. And I think because it was 9-11, Facebook claims it was their algorithm that like automatically put it up there. But they got to be a little more careful. So, yeah. I mean, there was, you know, that that those crazy pictures of Hillary looking like she's next, you know, on her deathbed. <laughs> and, you know, and, and, and like, oh, the things you don't know about her health. And then you click on it and you're like, oh, or even the the academy of physicians and surgeons or something like that like that's not a thing right that's an actual like separate group that's not a you know what i mean that's right. not the uh, american academy of whatever well and that's what i'm saying and i think that when you when check you your source stories it, that that's exactly what you got to <laughs> consider the source and you know i used to sometimes i get confused sometimes when the onion would report things i'm like wait <laughs> that that actually sounds legit and i'm like wait yeah. where is this coming from how like, sad oh, is that onion. that the yeah. onion actually well, you're worried that it's it's real so we actually have to take a very very quick break oh dang it i know right um yeah so we'll be right back and yeah way to bury the lead who do we have on the show today kim kira phillips you may know her from cnn, CNN or Rock from her star. author and she, she's just like award-winning journalist emmy award win- oh. she's got lots of awards i yeah. haven't even heard of and she's a mom and, and so a wife she, and a wife yeah. oh and she's on cnn and her husband's on fox news like this is so good i can't <laughs> w- <laughs> we will be right back Connect with the Broads on Facebook at facebook.com slash broadscast. Hey, I told you it'd be fast. Wow. (laughs) Hey, so um, I have a question for you. Before we get to Kira Phillips, I have a question for you. How did, when you were growing up and you were eating, um, you know, dinners and such, Mm -hmm. how did you get your vegetables? Like how, what did Fred make you? Del Monte, baby. (laughs) Canned, right? Yeah. (laughs) Excuse me. Um, me too. Like I grew up on canned, like oh that creamy veg all. corn, cream oh, corn. Disgusting. Oh, creamed corn. Do you remember that veg all? And it had like <laughs> different mixed like peas and carrots, carrots and, and those corn. green beans. Uh-huh. Oh, was it green beans? Oh green my beans. gosh! Mm-hmm. All I know is it was horrible. <laughs> veg all. <laughs> it's literally. Called when I'm that. having flashbacks <laughs> to corned beef hash and 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 creamy corn out of a can. Thanks. Dad. Oh yeah. yeah, thanks, Fred. So okay. I, I was the same. I mean, I'm one of thirteen, so like it was very very difficult, you know, to to. Uh, feed 13 kids on a budget, right? So I, as a mom, I try to kind of move it in a different direction. And, you know, I'm, I have to say, I'm intimidated by like fresh vegetables and recipes and all that stuff where you go to the farmer's market and you're like, I, I don't even know what to do. Right. So last weekend, you and I had a little experiment (laughs) with our new friends at Blue Apron Oh my God. I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. You know me. I do not like getting things shipped to me that I had no control over. Jackie always wants to experiment with new things. And I was like, no. And this amazing box showed up at my door and my son opened it up and all these like incredible things came out of it. Like fresh chicken. And f- I mean, I ordered the no meat one, which mm-hmm. that was only part of the control I well, had was that I could sort of determine you, what yeah. kinds of food I like in my house. So I, no I meat, could, no fish, no right. dairy, like gluten-free. I think right. they have all yeah, these different yeah. options. Yeah. So all these incredible things came out and we were able to cook this incredible dinner that was full of fresh vegetables and fresh, um, chicken. No, we did, right? we did shrimp, shrimp and grits from my first, um, but it was incredible to be able to like know what to do with fresh vegetables and know how to prepare them. And, I was super excited. Yeah, that's. I mean, I was very excited too because I got um, this like these two meals. I'm like pulling them out: uh, hoisin beef and vegetable stir fry. And my kids ate it, which is crazy. And then the Monterey Jack and spiced pepper quesadillas. Ooh. So I found out this week that 
their recipes, they actually only, like, you will not get a repeated recipe within a year. Oh. Yeah. And all the little fruits and vegetables that I've wanted to feed my kids are in the perfect, like, portions. So right. I don't have to, like, throw a bunch of stuff out like I usually right. do, even right. though I try to put them in that drawer. Well, that's what <laughs> I said for me that was really helpful because I normally have far too much or too little. I'm terrible when it I mean, I love to cook, but mm-hmm. I don't know how to portion properly right so this was right yeah Yeah, this was good and I mean you are are a single mom and with your son Sam and you guys were able to do this and I even though I chose the family of four one I have a family of five and it totally one day I could have added a piece of corn to it but other than that like everything was totally there so anyway thank you blue apron and guess what guys you can get your own three meals free with free shipping plus free shipping is right Kim Goldman yeah um Go ahead. Tell oh, them. So tell all them you got to do, do is go to blueapron.com slash broads. Yep. And that's how it works. Um, you get to, and then tell us how, tell us how your meals went and sh- send us pictures and, and share with us so we can share with our friends over at Blue Apron. But again, it's blueapron.com slash broads. B-R-O-A-D-S. Awesome. So um, we are going to talk to Ms. Kira Phillips in just a second. Um, you're listening to Broadcast. Subscribe to Broadcast on iTunes. I'm digging our little, um, our little very quick breaks. Yeah, I like it. Gives me a chance to um, hiccup and sneeze and, and sip your coffee and sip my coffee. So, so I'm um, my my super my my I'm just so excited I can't even <laughs> speak. So in the last 20 years, I have had the good fortune and sometimes not such good fortune Mm. of meeting some people in the media and, um, have been uncomfortably having to share my personal stories and, and my life with, with people on camera. And Kira Phillips has always stood out to me as been, um, as being someone who is so kind and compassionate and warm and, We've stayed friends over the years, and and it's no wonder because she's a six-time Emmy (laughs) Award-winning CNN reporter. She's a two-time Edward R. Murrow Awards um, Award winner for her investigative reporting. She has received a top documentary award from the Society of Professional Journalists, where I've spoken and uh, done panels with them. They're incredible. She's a winner of a Peabody Award twice over and Reporter of the Year in 1997. I could probably go on, um, but... Last but not least, she's a mom to five-year-old twins, Sage and Kellen, who I've seen pictures of. They're adorable. (laughs) Um, And wife to reporter John Roberts. And the author of The Whole Life Fertility Plan. And she's my friend. (laughs) Welcome, Kira, to the show. Oh, my gosh. What an intro, (laughs) Kim. You want to be my agent? Right? (laughs) Will you start pimping me? Yeah. You know what? Exactly. It's so awkward. I've I've done, you know, like a couple of speeches or whatever, and when they sit and they do your bio, I'm like, oh, my God. I need to update my bio. This is so (laughs) embarrassing. I feel like I'm on This Is Your Life. And it's like, oh, take that out. Take that out. But it's really impressive, Kira. I mean... I mean, no shame to you that a six-time Emmy Award-winning producer, I mean, reporter, that's incredible. Seriously. I think I've been doing this far too long. As I'm listening to that, I'm going, ooh, shouldn't I be retiring and hanging out with my kids? No, they're going to appreciate all that you do to make their lives better and more enlightened. You know, it's funny that you say that, Kira, um, b- because, you know, your kids are what, six years old? Five years old? They're going to be six in March. They just started kindergarten. They're five. Oh, my gosh. Kindergarten. So, you know, what do they, what do they think about, you know, when mom's off, like, saving the world? I always say Kim's out saving the world. But, like, you're, you know, you're doing really important work. Like, how do you, how does that translate at home? How do you talk about it with them? Well, it's hard because for them, it's like, why do you have to go to work, mom? Why do you have to be gone so late? Why do you have to travel? And I love it. They they count they count the days by sleep. So they go, oh. okay, how many oh. sleeps are you going to be gone? <laughs> Three sleeps, four sleeps. Why five sleeps? I mean, it just breaks my heart. And so what I've learned is if I explain to them what I'm doing, then they're fascinated. They ask more questions. They want to know more about the story. They want to know more about the person. And then I and then I also explain to them that, you know, mommy has to work in order to provide for your home and your clothes and your food. And 
I'll tell you many a times where, you know, I've had to do the lectures on, on gratefulness. You know, my husband and I are, are pretty well known for sitting them down and putting on a video of like a mission trip to Africa or, you know, uh, a, a video about poverty. I mean, we have no problem showing that stuff to our kids at five years old. And let me tell you, there, there comes more questions, there comes more compassion, and it sort of like silences this kind of greedy attitude that, you know, I think it comes naturally, right? But you've got to nip it in the bud early on, or that's what creates, you know, these kids that then just kind of expect everything to be handed to them. I mean, I worry about that all the time. Right. Do you, do you, because you and John are both, um, John Roberts, your husband, he's, uh, he's a reporter for Fox news. Do you guys have to balance your schedule so that you're both not gone at the same time? Or how does that work with having two oh. high profile personalities in the house? Heck yeah, it is hard. And it's funny. I always say, oh, he works for the enemy. Um, and, and then, you know, as Bill O'Reilly, like, Bill O'Reilly always likes to say, well, John, while you were at the witness protection program at a place called CNN, and then you came to Fox <laughs> News, uh, glad, we're glad you came out of hiding. I mean, he's very funny about it. And we joke about it, too, when we do speaking engagements. And depending on what state you're in, you've got a crazy Fox crowd, or you'll have a really crazy CNN crowd. So we kind of, we have fun with that. But on a serious note, it is, it's hard because right now he's on the campaign trail and I'm, I'm a single mom. And luckily with my job, I, I, I can do a lot from, from here. And I have a lot of my traveling done, actually got a lot of that done before things got really crazy with the election. So it's hard. And we have to have a lot of conversations with our kids that it's not always going to be this way, but there are certain times where, you know, we'll both be on the road and that's where grandma is a savior. I always oh, believe that having somebody in the family, right. It's yeah. so important to have somebody that they're so familiar with and general really, really loves them and has their best interest at heart and a family member. I try very, very hard um, to make that happen when we both have to be on the road. Do they get confused when they see you on TV and, and like wonder how, how are you there, but you're here with me yeah. on your lap? Is that, <laughs> my oh son my still God. gets that way the and he's story, almost 13. Yeah. Oh, I have the, the best pictures and the videos and the best stories. Like when they were really little, I have them kissing the television. Oh. I have them, oh. you know, talking to dad, talking to me and wondering why we're not responding to them. Um, I, I mean, it, it's the most hilarious uh, reactions now they understand, okay, dad's on TV or mom's on TV and they sit and they listen and they ask questions. They even laugh, which is, I mean, my son <laughs> kills me. He, he, at five years old, he understands like, like witty jokes or comments and actually cracks up and they'll make comments. Like I, my son even made a comment about Trump's hair one time oh. <laughs> and my daughter, you know, made comments about, you know, Trump's lips. I mean, it's hilarious. They, they pay attention to these things and they actually comment now on what's going on. <laughs> well, what a perfect household to have, like, you, you know, both of you on, on opposite ends there at CNN and Fox News and, and your kids get to kind of choose you know, which side <laughs> that's what happens when you guys each leave the home, you get to butter them up and, and undo what the other one did. Right. <laughs> exactly. You totally, and, and you know what, one of, um, one of our cousins gave them for, at, at our baby shower, they gave us a Fox news onesie and a CNN onesie. Oh. And so we had a, we had a really good time taking pictures with those onesies, you know, and, you know, putting them in different places and setting the kids in certain areas. Oh yeah. It was classic. It was pretty fun. So how do you, how do you and John divvy up like stories? I mean, I know you, you have turned more of your attention to doing documentaries, right. And, and John probably does more, daily news. I don't know if I'm categorizing that right, but how do you guys determine like who gets, who gets the get? <laughs> yeah. You know, that's funny because we have actually been in situations where we've been covering the same story and, and it's, and it's, it's weird. I mean, it, I mean, I wouldn't say it's awkward because we love each other and we respect each other and we both want each other to do really well, but there have been some moments where we've been on the same story and it's been a little awkward, you know, and, and depending on what the story is, um, there have been times where I have the great connection and I totally kick his butt. And then, you know, there'll be another situation where he is, you know, way entrenched in the story with the contacts and the sources. And I'm kind of on the outskirts going, oh, man, he's totally going to get me on this one. Um, and that's usually been military or political. He's really well connected in the political world. I'm really well connected in the military world. 
So, um, but, you know, recently, since I've been delving into a lot of documentaries and he is strictly on politics, um, we haven't had much competition lately. We've just been able to support each other in what our projects are. Do you guys turn it off when you get home? Is, do you guys have a rule that, like, when you come in the door, I, I just now picture you're just... Kira, like, uh, giving him a little extra wine to get some info out of him. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> you want a second glass, Johnny? <laughs> she comes out yeah, in her yeah, negligee. Honey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you want to get busy? Got a couple questions for you just before we go upstairs. <laughs> uh-huh. I like yeah. it. Talk about yeah, foreplay know, in that house, right? <laughs> there, oh, yeah. Woo-hoo. Yep. All you have to do is just start talking news and oh it's no time <laughs> so <laughs> it's sleep time in my house when that happens you know maybe this is a little naive or, or, or on my part like i'm not necessarily educated in this but so if you're working for cnn and he's working for fox news does that really like i i assume that makes your political um you know, where you're drawn maybe different as well or you're just doing your jobs at different well, places i you know, I, I, I have to tell you, um, you know, we really we're nonpartisan. And I and I and I mean that. I mean, there are things that we respect um, on both sides and, and we get into great conversations about it. I mean, really good conversations. Um, but there there we would never, ever say that we are conservative or liberal because we truly have um, strong feelings and opinions um, that incorporate both. Uh, both ways of thought. And I think that helps us um, very much at remaining objective and um, looking at things differently. I mean, that we definitely know that, that there are, you know, the networks, um, you know, CNN, we, we, we are, we're, we're down the middle. I've been in those editorial meetings. I mean, we really talk about being balanced. That is, that is a, it's always been the priority of CNN to be that way. But, you know, MSNBC has had no problem saying, hey, we're left. Um, Fox has had no problem saying, hey, we're right. Mm-hmm. But I will tell you that when, when my husband got hired um, back, you know, in the Roger Ailes uh, days, um, there were a lot of conversations about, you know what, John, you're coming from CBS News, you're coming from CNN, you're going to get hammered um, coming to a conservative network. And he's like, you know, I can handle it. I'm, you know, I'm a solid journalist. I'm down the middle. I'm going to tell the story the way it needs to be told. And he, you know, we're very thankful, has never been put in, the, in a position where he feels uncomfortable. So we've been very, very lucky that way that um, neither of us have felt pressure um, to to. to to go, you know, toward a political slant, which is which is great because you know you're going to get objective reporting from us. So now, so, when we're home, yeah, we definitely, <laughs> you know, if the CIA, you know, was spying on us and they had cameras, I mean, we definitely go off on some things that drive us crazy. Okay, but right. you know, when it comes to our work. Uh, we, we do, we, we try to say we remain level headed. <laughs> well, so speaking of being level headed, I mean, you guys have been, I don't know how long John's been in, uh, actually, I don't know when you guys both started, but I will tell you though, what? when I was an intern in Boston at a CBS affiliate in 1992, uh, you know, we, we, I had to log the, uh, national news that was on at the, like the crack of dawn or, you know, and John was one of the reporters. Oh yeah! Oh wow! <laughs> so you were so. Let's see. What what what? You were working for CBS. Affiliate? I was working. CBS I was working. Yeah, they're now an NBC affiliate, at least temporarily, but in Boston. Um, okay. And so I was an intern, and um, we had to kind of like log the national news in the morning at six o'clock in the morning when it was you know. So and, it was in the early okay, 90s. Okay, that's yeah. probably he did do a morning show, and then he did. Um, weekends and then he and then at the at the network level because he did do o and o work you're right in miami and that's when he did the morning show and then when he went to the network in new york he did the weekend evening news and then of course filled in for for dan rather right. um so he had a good run a very good run yeah. at at cbs so yeah, speaking and, of and, speaking of having a good run do you think that i mean for both of you do you feel like because you mentioned it before about being level-headed and being objective that the news today really allows you to be level-headed and objective considering what it was 20 30 years ago do you think it's changed drastically or are you i mean i i as a, as a viewer feel like it's it's so yeah. different than how i remember People just want to get the first they want to be first and not necessarily accurate so how do you and john <laughs> maintain what what your 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 ethics and your morals in that no, that's a great question. And I, I think, number one, you know, we really are true journalists. I mean, he was doing radio news uh, in, his, in his teenage, early 20s. 
I started a school newspaper in the fourth grade. I mean, we are definitely true blue, okay, geeky journalists. It's in our blood. We love it. And and we were we were trained in a time and we grew up in a time, right? Where you know you needed to to gumshoe and you 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 needed to build good sources and you needed to be well read and you needed to know your history and um, you, know, you need to be a good listener and obviously through the years with television and the competition of television and social media oh my gosh anybody now can have a voice right, right. Uh, because of social media right. um, it has definitely changed the business and it's really really tough to navigate um that sometimes um but when it comes down to it we're old school we really are so how long will we last i don't know because we are old school uh but we've done pretty pretty well so far and we feel good that we've never had to compromise what we believe in or or what now there's been times obviously where i'm like oh my gosh do we have to keep doing this story again and again and again and that's one thing that i love about you know working the documentary unit and doing investigative pieces is it's it's all enterprise um and it's in depth and even kim you know what what we what we got to do you know back in the day two decades two decades ago you know, I was having to chase the story and, and, and figure out the facts, and, and, and it was tough. And now 20 years later, um, you know, with a story that people are so fascinated about, you know, it gives me great pleasure that I was able to sit down with you and actually really do a heartfelt, in-depth conversation two decades later because, boy, have we changed. I mean, right. that actually, that period in time, I think you know and I know, changed journalism history, the way we see it, the way we chase it, the way we understand it, the way we watch it. I mean, it was, it really, it it changed the course of our business in so many ways, especially television. That was the first time people really sat back and were, were, it was appointment television. Um, They were glued to it. I mean, that's how court TV got started because of that. So, you know, um, but, but I think that the biggest changes that I've observed, I mean, back when I went to journalism school, there was no broadcast department. I mean, there were some edit days with some pretty junky VHS cameras, and it was, you know, it was low budget, girls, okay, low budget. Right. So, so when I went to journalism school, it was still very print-oriented mm-hmm. um, and very radio-oriented. And um, I sure knew what a Pulitzer was and what it took to, to get a Pulitzer, not so much, you know, a TV Emmy. So, so I kind of, you know, I was in that period where I had incredible p- professors that were in the business and really amazing human beings, you know, and mentors and the real deal. So um, I, I'm thankful that I went to school and I kind of grew up in an era where it was still really raw and not impacted by television and social media yet. Um, so if you're just listening to us, um, we have six-time Emmy Award-winning <laughs> CNN reporter Kira Phillips on with the ladies at the broadcast. So, you know, you, you just mentioned being, you know, how long you've been in this business and, and where you started from. Do you think that it's it's difficult for a woman to be in this business and to have withstood you know, all, all of the sexism and, and, and all of the, you know, the difficulty with, with inequality, inequality. No, like, no, no, I don't No, no. I actually think that women have an advantage in this business. Um, I think that, and, and, and you'll see it, you'll, you'll meet, um, you will, you, you'll meet a wide variety, obviously a, a, of women in, in this business. Um, but you know, Gosh, and I have I have to think about you know how, how blunt and how transparent and direct I can be. I have to I have to still all of it. All of it is good for us, it. but I don't know about your PR lady. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, I know. I mean, when 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 I retire, I'll, I'll tell you all kinds of really juicy stuff. But <laughs> but I do feel I do feel comfortable saying, and I and I mean this that no, I, I don't think it's difficult for women um, to get into this business and do well in this business. Because if you're smart and you got a great education and you love to write and tell stories, and of course it's a huge bonus if you're attractive, um, you know, you got it going on because people, people like to watch smart and attractive people. That's just 
that's just the, the nature of the business. That, that's what's happened. Um, now, there are a lot of people, too, that, you know, are frustrated in the business that a lot of people get a break because maybe they're, you know, real, they're a pretty boy or, you know, they're a former Miss America and, or whatever. And, and um, people will judge and, and, and really look at those people kind of in, in, a, in, a, in a tougher way. Um, but so I, I think, um, you know, I went to college in the eighties. And that was the time where we were talking about breaking the glass ceiling. It was mm-hmm. pretty much still white males when I was trying to get into the television business. And I remember my professor saying to me, you, you need to be different. You need to figure out what you can offer up that, that nobody else has. And, you know, my mom was a teacher for the deaf. My dad was a Spanish professor. So I worked on my sign language. I worked on my Spanish and that actually gave me huge inroads and opportunities Sign language was unique and different. Spanish really helped me um, in the business because, you know, the Hispanic community has, especially you, you guys know in California, you know, where I grew up. I mean, you, you don't learn Spanish, you know, <laughs> you right. don't, you've got to learn Spanish. I went the um, French route, so I don't know. I, I don't know why I, I <laughs> wee wee yeah. in Chicago. Oh, Chicago. No, I just think you're a romantic. You're yeah. a true romantic. That's yeah. why. <laughs> I, I, oh, I boy, took Spanish I for five years and I still have a little bit of trouble. I can say cerveza. <laughs> <laughs> dos cervezas. Dos, I can say dos cerveza. Yeah. yeah. Cuatro. So, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. But, you know, Kira, I mean, here you are, you know, we could, we could go back to our intro here and, and, you know, describe all of the amazing uh, accomplishments you've had as a journalist, but that wasn't enough for you. <laughs> so you went and, you know, not only had some fertility struggles on your, uh, you know, personally, but then, you know, put yourself out there to help other people. Can you give us a little bit of uh, the history, you know, with, with your personal experience? Oh yeah. Because I, I love talking about this and, and, and I think that every, every woman can, can relate to this. Um, you know, we want to have it all right. You, well, most of us do. We want to have the family and the partner and the, um, the kids and the beautiful home and the great job and the good salary. I mean, we dream about that. We dream about having everything. And as we know, it's very, very hard to do that. And I spent all my younger years chasing my professional dream and you know unfortunately leaving some really nice guys in the dust didn't necessarily mean to and believe me I got dumped a lot too um but my priority was to make it in the business because I loved it and I wanted to succeed and I also wanted to give back to my parents that was a huge thing too they had sacrificed so much for me so I was really driven and um so you know I was married one time and uh I rushed it I married for the wrong reasons and it was pretty much disastrous and I'll never forget um going through a divorce I I was covering the Iraq war and I came back uh because I got this call from my security company that um there was a break in well it wasn't a break in what had happened was a valve had popped upstairs and my entire house flooded. So oh gosh, here I come back from war. I'm going through a terrible <laughs> divorce. I'm 40. I just lose everything in my home. And I remember sitting on the front steps going, oh, my gosh, what did I give up? What did I sacrifice? What did I do? I have just lost everything. Yeah, I've got my job, but I have just lost everything else that was supposed to make me feel complete. And that is what triggered the, the fertility uh, adventure, I like to say. <laughs> I called up one of my best guy friends um, who's gay, and I said, I need you to give me your sperm. Um, I'm going to be a single mom, and you can be involved if you want. I'd love it. Of course, his parents were thrilled. Uh, and during that process of going through fertility. So he said yes? My best, oh, yeah. He oh, said wow. Yes. And the poor, the poor guy, I mean, he, you know, you, you have to go in and produce a sample as we like to say. Okay. And you go in, you sit in a cozy chair, it's a dark room and there's porn in there basically. Okay. Magazines and porn. Well, he's gay. So he comes out and he looks at me and he goes, that was the most horrible experience (laughs) I have ever gone through. All there was was female porn. I, I just, I, I couldn't even think about it. And so I said, well, what did you do? And he just said, I closed my eyes. I put on my iPod and I just did my business. <laughs> That's hilarious. Like that. uh-huh. 
Oh my gosh. Yes. Uh-huh. It was he did his business. Well, in the process of um, you know, this time I had gone back to Iraq, uh, to the war zone again. So that was kind of put on hold. Well, when I came back home, um, is when I met my husband now and I said, Look, you know, here's the deal. <laughs> I was going through fertility with Matt, but blah 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 he said, Hey, I'm open to having a family, you know, let's go for it. But we still both, because of our age, needed to do fertility. And that's when I decided to write the book. I just kinda wanted to tell my story, but more so I wanted to have a book that gave you all the information that you needed, whether you were eighteen 25 or 45. I want all women to know their options. I want the young girls to know how sex and drugs and alcohol and the makeup you put on, the air that you breathe, um, the jobs that you, you encounter, all of that can impact your fertility and your body and your egg count and all of that stuff. Um, to, to my age where I had to go through the process of fertility. I want to, I want to tell women it's okay. It's not as bad as you think. And here's what you can eat and here's what you can uh, do. And, and here's how much exercise and, and, um, all the way to, we even talk about adoption that, Hey, if fertility doesn't work out for you, then there are a lot of babies out there that need a mama. So, mm-hmm. so you write the whole life fertility plan, this incredible book. And one of the best quotes that Jackie and I both stumbled on was, um, you, when you were promoting it, you said, I've been trying to get on Fox for about 10 years. And as soon as I said, I'm writing about my husband's super sperm, they booked you. <laughs> so I, I love that. Um, but was it hard for you? I mean, did your, did John sign on to you being so open about your your decision to go the fertility the fertility route i mean the fertility um the what's the word like to go get fertility Process? treatments yeah, oh, yeah treatments sorry oh. like to be so open about oh, yeah. it and yeah yeah he actually he was he was very supportive um he was very open about it he was very proud um because he had super sperm can you imagine if he did it <laughs> oh, he'd be like no no yeah <laughs> he's oh, like yeah. write two books I, honey <laughs> Well, he even said something like, you know, you know, he, he he's a better swimmer than Michael Phelps. He had some <laughs> great line about, you know, <laughs> about That's about funny. that. I thought, ooh, that was pretty good. Um, so so yeah, and I and I think that we we both. We, I think the reason why we we had no problem talking about it and being excited about it and and being proud is because we wanted to make a family and we had a way to do that in a time where. I mean, there was a time where that wasn't available. Right. If you were a woman and you reached a certain age, forget about it. You were you were done, which is why, you know, so many uh, women we know felt like they had to get married at 18, 19, 20, 21, and immediately start having babies because our biological clock just starts ticking from the minute we're born. Right. So I wrote, so I that, wrote was, that helped. I wrote about um, uh, my, my best friend um, struggled with infertility and, and it really did a number on her um, belief that she could be a mom or that she was destined to be a mom. And she really was like, maybe this is God's way of telling me I'm not supposed to be a mom. And I remember how hard it was for her to kind of reconcile because all it's all she wanted to do. And she, you know, for five years and, you know, so many failed you know, processes. And, and, you know, one of the things I remember us talking about is like, you're fighting so hard to be a parent. And I think that's something that gets lost when people think about being, you know, not being able to have kids naturally or having to have extra support in that process, like the fight and the, and the determination to be a parent, I just think is when so many other people are just like, it's so easy (laughs) for them. And sometimes they shouldn't be right right away. But like, I just, I I love that determination. And, you know, I just, I, I guess I feel like that gets lost sometimes. Right. And and you know you know what what really um, strikes a chord with me is when I see um, kids being abused. Yeah. And and I and I think oh my gosh here more than anything on the face of the earth you know what I would give to have a child like yours and you're abusive I, I just I have I, I just can't understand it and it and it makes me it just infuriates me. Um, and, but you know, it, it's like you said, I, I know there's a reason for everything. And, and now I see it, you know, you don't always know why when it's all happening, mm-hmm. but now I know I was meant to, I mean, be on the show with you guys and talk about it and to write a book and to be able to do speeches. And, and also, you know, it's meant a lot to even mentor friends and even strangers <laughs> and, and try to, to show 
support and lead them to, to ideas and, and contacts to, to have the ability to do it. It right. just, it, it makes my heart sing. It feels right. You know, it really feels right. Well, you, you said that you, you know, you wrote this book for women who are 18, women who are in their 40s, you know, and this is amazing information. What do you think when you were so driven in your career, what do you wish you knew back then that you are now telling people? Like, what, what would have been helpful for you? Oh, boy. Um, how I treated my body. Um, you know, I, I, I smoked when I was younger and I never, I had no idea then what smoking can do to your eggs. I I mean, it basically just causes them to all shrivel up and, you know, die. (laughs) Uh, You know, so, so that is, that's a big one. And I think that that might've been one of the reasons, you know, that I, that I had trouble, but, you know, in our stressful business where everybody smoked in the eighties and the nineties, it was a horrible habit that I picked up. And I'm so ashamed of myself that I ever did it. Um, of course, I'm on an absolute health kick and, and haven't smoked in my gosh, a decade. Um, you know, that was one thing that I had no idea how bad it could be on my body. Um, you know, and, and if I can be blunt, something else, you know, I, I wasn't sexually active actually until much later in life. And that's actually a really funny story. It involves Mother Teresa. And we can maybe talk about that another time. Um, but um, well, that's I a tease. Never, oh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Coming up. So, um, you know, even premarital um, sex uh, can impact your fertility and, you know, STDs and contraception and all these kind of, of things. Um, so, uh, that was some. You know, I learned a lot actually when I was when I was putting this book together. I learned so much that I wished I would have known then. Things that you eat, chemicals that are in makeup. Um, I mean, it's 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 wild. This, even the candles that you burn. Okay, the candles that you burn can can release uh, chemicals that can impact your fertility. Wow. Um, but I think one of the things now that that I really like to talk about, and that's egg freezing. Um, women don't have to feel rushed now. They don't have to um, worry about the biological clock. You know, in their 20s, even in their, their late teens, they can freeze their eggs and, you know, put them on ice and carry a baby, you know, not until they're, you know, 40. So, um, I mean, I had a friend who, who froze embryos and she had a second kid at 51 years old, you know. Um, wow. So there's a lot of things that are available now too that I want women to know about, um, and so they they can have they don't feel rushed and they don't make the mistakes that I did. You know, I think I rushed my first marriage and because I felt like, oh my gosh, I, I'm getting old. I, I'm not going to be able to get pregnant. I won't be able to have a family, and that 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 causes you to make bad decisions in life. Yeah. Right. I love the fact, though, I mean, for for disclosure here, one of my three children is adopted. And I love the fact that you touch upon adoption in this, too, because I, I, I'm a firm believer if you want to be a parent, you can be a parent. It doesn't necessarily it's not necessarily going to look the way you imagined it and you envisioned it. But you can be a parent. There are many, many ways. And so I love that you don't just talk about fertility and overcoming that, but other, other alternatives. So Absolutely. And by the way, I raise you up and, and, uh, bow before you, um, that, Oh, that don't do that, Kira. <laughs> gave, yes. Yes. You gave a child the beautiful gift of adoption. Um, and, and I felt that was extremely important to have in the book because, uh, I, I have seen, some children in the most horrible situations become the most beautiful, dynamic, brilliant, successful people because parents like you chose um, to adopt. And I just, I think it, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And, and it's just as fantastic as having a, a biological child. I mean, it, it's important. And, and I, and I always want that to be a, a vibrant and positive option for people because, I see way too many horrible things going on. I mean, in the foster care system, um, in in you know even biological families. I told you, I mean, sexual abuse and 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 all types of abuse of children. Just it's it's something I'm very passionate about and an advocate to, to fight against. Um, so uh, yes, that would absolutely be a part of my book. In no way, shape, or form am I saying, oh, fertility, fertility, you got to have your own biological children. No way. This right. is just one option. Right. This is just one option. 
and you know people look at it as just adopt like like it's this you could just go down to ralph's adopt grocery shop. store <laughs> take one off the shelf <laughs> you know and order the child of your dream yeah. uh, we no. adopted internationally <laughs> and and you know uh Homeland Security and all that. Like, I, it took more to adopt a child. It's amazing, you know that than the. I felt like they were tapping my house to make sure, <laughs> make sure we were we were worthy. So, Kira, we only have a couple minutes left, but I wanted to ask, you know, being that okay. So, in my and I know I think you know this that I run a, a nonprofit agency that works with teens, and so I see a lot of what you're talking about with the abuse and neglect and foster care, and and it really has changed me as a parent. Um, and I would imagine that you seeing what you've seen and John, you know, both of you being, you know, seeing so much of the yuck in our world with the work that you do. do How do you think that's impacted your ability to be a parent? Oh boy. Let me tell you. In four minutes or less. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. In five seconds or less. Two minutes. Um, I just lied. (laughs) It's made me, uh, number one, more patient. That is for sure. Um, more patient, more compassionate, a better listener, um, uh, just kind of taking a breath, being calm, and, and trying not to, you know, freak out when you're, act- when you're tired and you've had a long day and they are just pick, 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 picking at you, right? right. Um, and not only, not only has it made me a better person with regard to those specific at- attributes, but it, it, I want to expose them um, to all types of families and, and economics and um, so they, their eyes are open and they can be advocates um, for good and to look after their peers and other children. And, you know, so many of us just kind of live in a bubble and I don't ever want to be that way and I don't want my kids to be that way. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it's our responsibility to look after other kids that don't have a voice. So, you know, it's really opened my eyes on, on, on that front, the advocacy front, and also just trying to be a better, calmer, more patient person. Well, Kara, you've been incredibly gracious with us. We didn't even get to talk about Mom Squad, and I apologize for that. But we'll put yeah, all... check out her, uh, her <laughs> yeah. podcast, Mom Squad, on iTunes, and we'll put a link up to. Well, um... And we want you guys. By the way, I want to tell you now. Christine even said to me, my co-host, she said we've got to get Jackie and Kim on the Mom Squad. Show. We we are we again. Let me let me tell you, we're done. Yeah. And yeah. and you have to promise to tell us a story about Mother Teresa yeah. there, but. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Kira, thank you. Um, you, you like I said at the top of the show, you you have been incredible to me and to my family. But I've I've admired you. I respect you, and um, I appreciate that you have maintained such uh, integrity over all these years. And um, someone that I look up to. So I appreciate that, and I'm just happy to know you. And thanks for giving us your time this morning. Well, the feeling is mutual, Jackie. Great to meet you. It's and so Kim, nice you know to meet you. I love you and your dad. Uh, thank you. Pleasure. Say hi to John and the kids. This isn't the end, Kira. This is I just will. the beginning of, a, of our beautiful relationship. <laughs> I love it. Have a beautiful marriage. Yay. <laughs> Have later. a great day. Thank, thank you. you. All right, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. She is awesome. I know. I told yeah, you. Yeah, you did tell me. I you did. did tell me. And I believed you. And there's very few people that, that, that oh. stay in this business and, and have really just managed to stay grounded and level-headed. And um, she really is... I've known her for a very long time, and she's always been a standout uh, lady to me. So, yeah. hey, so let's uh, hear what our voiceover guy Andrew Bowen has to say this oh, time. Something important. Hold on. Subscribe to Broadcast on iTunes. Well, thank. Well, that you, was Andrew. compelling. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Andrew Bowen, for being our fabulous voiceover guy for all these years. So um, we only have a minute left. Oh, our first day on KCAA. I hope hey. you uh, have enjoyed the show. Yeah, we let us know. Have so much going on on broadcast.com. You can find past episodes. This is like our ninety seventh episode. Oh, or, yeah. It, yeah, you people are coming late to the party. Yeah, yeah. Join Next in. week is our hundredth. Yeah. Oh my god. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Bring some beer. So we are. Um, you know, we're, we're just grateful for, for you listening and you can always find us on broadcast.com. Yeah. And chat with and us on social media. Let us know what you like to hear. Let us know what you liked about the show. And we're not going to change it if you didn't, but I'm um, just kidding. <laughs> uh, thank you for welcoming us into your car and your home and your work. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. You are listening to broadcast for more from the broads head to broadcast.com.